we will chat. So Casey, come on up, introduce yourself, and let's talk about your coaching cycles in action. Yeah. So I am Casey Watts, and I live in a small town called Nacogdoches, Texas. And I've been in education for about 15 years. Um, I'm technically in my third year as an instructional coach, but I'm in a district, I'm in a new district for myself um, that has never had an instructional coach. So it's fairly new to them. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that you have been implementing the organic coaching cycles through some really awesome things. So you're going to have to tell us all about them because everyone out there is waiting to hear. So I started the year in a school, like I said, that was new to instructional coaching. And one of my first days I asked about PLCs. When do you have PLCs? And the answer was, we don't. <laughs> And we're not going to this year because it was a crazy year anyway with COVID. And um, so mitigations really put a damper on things. But I had been learning about organic coaching cycles with Allison and the new to coaching group. And I started thinking, how in the world can I make this happen and really work with these people on a professional level and work with them to meet their goals and meet the needs of students. And so um, I started implementing something called collaborative studies, which was basically my kickstart PD. And the collaborative studies were a little bit different because I wasn't it, I was opening it as a time for teachers to come together and collaborate about a topic of interest. And so I started the year with classroom management collaborative study. Um, and then I moved into and that was like a group of people who were new to teaching and they needed a little bit of support with classroom management specifically. And then we moved into kind of some opportunities for people to join um, on a voluntary basis. And so the second collaborative study was over guided reading because lots of teachers showed interest in wanting to learn more about guided reading. And so my collaborative studies really started off with a bang because I told them this is completely optional. If you're wanting to learn more about guided reading, we're gonna come together and pull our resources and discuss it. I'll bring some materials. You bring your experience and your brains. And it really developed a strong foundation for me coming in as a new person um, and building trust with those teachers and building relationships and getting to know what it is that they already knew about certain topics. And it opened the door for me to go into classrooms because now I had this foundation that we had built together as a team of here's what we're working on together. This is what I know you want to know more about and I'm learning right alongside you. And so I was able to go into classrooms and it just felt natural and comfortable because they knew I was coming in to study this topic with them. But um, somebody's asking, how often did you have your collaborative studies and for how long? So I, in the beginning, it was really like I looked at the survey that I sent out for teachers to show what they were interested in. And from there, I built those. Huh? Tell us more about those surveys that you were that you yes. were using. Okay, so in the beginning, I sent out surveys to see what their interest, what they were interested in studying, and so from there, like I think I had very very broad categories like classroom management, um, workshop approach, conferring. I mean, it was very broad categories, and then within those categories. If there was a lot of interest in that category, I decided to set it up as a collaborative study for the months to come. So I have at, planned out for the rest of the year all of the collaborative studies based on what those teachers said they were most interested in. And so within that, then I could dig a little bit deeper to see what is it exactly that they want to learn more about conferring or about classroom management. Um, in the beginning, those collaborative studies took place for about four weeks and it happened like every Tuesday from four to five after school. And usually I tried to make it as brief as possible because I know that at about that time, if it's not required, they really have a hard time maintaining stamina. So we really tried to keep it within 30 to 45 minutes instead of the full hour 
Now, I will say as time has gone on and we know as we get closer to the end of the school year, it's a little bit more challenging to get teachers to want to attend those things. So I've really had to start thinking about how to be creative about meeting with them. Um, and I know Jessica can share more about some things that she does too to try to get to those teachers. But this past month, actually today after school, I did a Teams chat, um, which was basically like a Facebook Live. And so that was my only collaborative study event that I did for this month. Um, and it just varies over time. Like I've done collaborative study at the copier and I put up this bulletin board above the copier with an article and sticky notes. And that was our collaborative study. And I could take those sticky notes and read them and read what people had written and go and have conversations with those teachers to potentially get into their classroom and begin a coaching cycle. Um, so it really and truly that organic approach has opened up the door to so many possibilities, but it also has built, like I said earlier, a foundation of trust and relationships with these teachers that I would not have had if I had not approached it that way in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I feel like you still have even more to tell us about how you actually took one of those collaborative studies and maybe put it into a coaching cycle. 